In our previous discussions, we have learned that we can use differential equations to model feedback control systems. And uh, since feedback control systems are dynamic in nature, it is best to represent these systems using differential equations. And how do we relate differential equations to a feedback control system? So the solution to a differential equation would represent the response or the output of the system. Okay, so if you have a system and you know the differential equation that uh, describes the system, in order to find its response, you just solve for the solution of the differential equation. So in this video, I will teach you how to solve for the solution of differential equations which represent the response of systems with the use of Laplace transforms. Okay, so let us solve the first example. Use Laplace transform to find the solution y of t if all initial conditions are zero. Okay, so here we have a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. And we can use Laplace transform to obtain the solution y of t. But before that, let us first analyze the equation. So here, the dependent variable is y. Your dependent variable y represents the solution. And this solution is the response of the system that we are looking for, okay? So, the solution to the DE represents the response. How about the input? What is the input to the system? The input to the system is the term on the right-hand side of the equation. So, this system has a constant input that has a magnitude of 32. Now, what about this U of T? What is the meaning of U of T? Multiplying the input by U of T means that the input is present only from t equals 0 onwards. So that means that uh, there are no inputs for negative values of t or for t less than 0. Okay, so that implies that the output that we will obtain would also start from 0. Thus, there will be no output for values of t less than 0. Now let us solve the equation. First, we need to get the Laplace transform of each and every term, okay? What is the Laplace transform of the second derivative? That's S squared Y of S, okay? So, let's write it down, S squared Y of S. Actually, there are two more terms, minus S Y of 0 and then minus Y prime of 0. But since these two terms involve initial conditions, Y of 0 and y prime of 0, which are both 0 according to the problem, then we will not include them anymore. So if the initial conditions are 0, only the first term in the Laplace transform will be left. So plus 12 times, what is the Laplace transform of the first derivative? That's s, y of s, okay, plus 32 times the Laplace transform of y, which is y of s equals what is the Laplace transform of 32? That's 32 over s. So the next step is to combine all the terms containing y of s. So here we have s squared plus 12s plus 32 times y of s equals 32 over s. Okay, now we can get the expression for y of s so here y of s equals 32 over s times this this term so this will become a denominator of the right hand side however this quadratic can be factored what are the factors of 32 that will give a sum of 12 so that's 4 and 8 so that's s plus 4 times s plus 8 uh, before we take the inverse Laplace transform, we need to express this as a sum of partial fractions. One important skill required in performing the inverse Laplace transform is partial fraction expansion. Okay, So you need to be proficient in expanding a rational expression as a sum of partial fractions. So uh, I will teach you some techniques in this video. 
To represent this as a sum of partial fractions, the first factor would have a numerator that is constant, a over s. So, since all the factors are linear, all numerators are constant. So, plus b over s plus 4 plus c over s plus 8. Now, the next step is to find the values of a, b, and c. In order to do that, we need to evaluate the left-hand side of the equation by uh, removing S at the moment. So if we will get the value of A, we need to remove its denominator from the left-hand side and let S be equal to 0. We need to find the value of S that will make its denominator 0. But since the denominator is S, we will let the value of S be equal to 0. Okay, so to solve for the value of A, we let S be equal to 0. And A equals, so on the numerator, we have 32 divided by 4 times 8, which is 32. So the value of A equals 1. To solve for the value of B, we will let S be equal to negative 4. Okay, and... Uh, temporarily remove it from the expression. Okay, so the value of B will be 32 over S, which is negative 4 multiplied by negative 4 plus 8, which is 4. Okay, so this is 16. 32 over 16 is 2, so we have negative 2. Okay, the value of B is negative 2. Now, to solve for C, we need to let the value of s be equal to negative 8, okay? And remove s plus 8 from the denominator. So that's negative 8. And solve for the value of c, 32 over, so we have negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. So the answer is 1. So now we know the values of a, b, and c. Now we will write y of s in terms of the sum of partial fractions. So we have 1 over s minus 2 over s plus 4 plus 1 over s plus 8. So finally, the last step is to get the inverse Laplace of y of s. If we get its inverse Laplace, we will get y of t, which is actually the solution of the differential equation. So, getting the inverse Laplace of each term, the inverse Laplace of 1 over s is 1, followed by the inverse Laplace of this term is minus 2, e to the negative 40, and then the Laplace of the last term, the inverse Laplace is e to the negative 80. So there you go, guys. We now have the solution of this differential equation. So if we analyze, the solution has a constant term and two terms involving decaying exponentials. So this solution represents the response of the system. Okay, so the system has a constant input and therefore we can expect a constant output. So this term is the constant output that we're looking for. Now, how about these two terms? These two terms are part of what you call the transient response of the system. And remember, the transient response decays with time until what's left is just this constant term which represents the steady state response. So therefore, the complete response of a system is the sum of the transient response and the steady state response. And since the input is present only from t equals 0 onwards, then it is proper that the output is present only for positive values of t as well. That's why we multiply the output by u of t. Okay. However, in the succeeding discussions, if the input has u of t, we will no longer multiply the output by u of t. It's understood that uh, the output is present only for positive values of t and the output will be zero for negative values of t. Okay. 
So in this example, we're able to show that we can use Laplace transform as a powerful tool for solving linear differential equations and therefore for obtaining the response of a linear system. Okay, so let us solve more examples. This time, a more challenging example. So, ito pala yung sagot. Ayan, no? 1 minus 2 e to the minus 40 plus e to the minus 80. So, tama naman yung nakuha nating sagot. Okay? <laughs> Nakalimutan ko. May answer ki pala doon. <laughs> okay, let us solve the next example. Find the response of a system described by the differential equation. Okay, so here we have the differential equation d squared x over dt squared plus 2dx over dt plus 2x equals sine 2t. So here we have two initial conditions, x of 0 equals 2 and the first derivative of x when t equals 0 equals negative 3. Okay, so this differential equation represents a system so this we have a second order equation which means that we we also have a second order system now the input of the system is sinusoidal it's sine 2t so we can expect that the output is also sinusoidal with some transient response with it so now how do we solve the differential equation so that we can get the response of the system First, we need to get the Laplace transform of each and every term. So, kuhanin natin yung Laplace transform ng second derivative. The variable is x. So, that's s squared x of s minus s x of 0 minus x dot of 0. So, x dot is the first derivative of x. Next, followed by... 2 times, what is the Laplace of the first derivative? That's s, x of s, minus x of 0. Plus, the Laplace of 2x is 2 times x of s. Okay, equals, what is the Laplace of sine 2t? The Laplace of sine 2t is 2 over s squared plus k squared, which is 4. Okay, now, let us combine all the terms containing x of s. So, the first term will be s squared followed by 2s and then plus 2. Okay, and then multiplied by x of s. Now, let's impose the initial conditions that x of 0 equals 2. So, this is 2, so minus 2s. And then the first derivative, when t is 0, is negative 3. So, negative of negative is positive 3. And then, x of 0 is 2. So, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 equals, we copy the right-hand side, 2 over s squared plus 4. So, now, we simplify this and uh, transpose to the other side. Okay? Kopyahin ko lang to. s squared plus 2s plus 2 multiplied by x of s equals 2 over s squared plus 4 plus 2s. Ito yun. And then 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Ililipat sa kabila magiging positive 1. So now we will simplify this and use a common denominator. Our common denominator is s squared plus 4. 2 plus Multiply lang natin to. So, 2 times 1, ito yon Plus, s squared plus 4 times this. So, we will get 2s cubed plus s squared plus 8s plus 4. Now, simplify natin yan. This is equal to 2s cubed plus s squared plus 8s plus 6. Okay. Divided by s squared plus 4. The next step is to solve for x of s. So, x of s will be equal to this divided by this times this term. This will be a part of the denominator of this expression. Okay? So, we copy 2s cubed plus s squared plus 8s plus 6. 
divided by okay so this is a quadratic and this is also a quadratic now uh, kanina finactor natin yung quadratic ang tanong ito ba ay factorable ito bang s squared plus 2s plus 2 ito ba ay factorable pa i don't think so so since this is a uh, an irreducible quadratic we'll simply let it be okay so s squared plus 4 times this one again is not factorable so we copy it s squared plus 2s plus 2 the next step is to express this as a sum of partial fractions this time our first factor is a quadratic that's why the numerator will be a linear function as plus b over s squared plus 4 so if you will remember from the previous example our denominator is a linear function that's why the numerator is constant so this time we have a quadratic factor s squared plus 4 that's why its numerator should be linear the rule is the degree of the numerator should be one degree lower than the degree of the denominator okay so for the second term still we have a quadratic so the numerator must be linear so cs plus d over s squared plus 2s plus 2 okay to solve for the values of a b c and d we will use the conventional method of equating coefficients why because we cannot use the shortcut method we did in the previous example why because the roots of our denominators are complex conjugates okay so it would be easier to use the equating coefficients or the conventional method so we multiply these two terms and we multiply these two terms okay we copy this expression on the next slide x of s equals 2s cubed plus s squared plus 8s plus 6 divided by s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 2s plus 2 equals okay so we multiply these two a s cubed plus 2as squared so a s cubed plus 2a s squared plus 2as plus ito naman bs squared plus 2bs plus 2b next we multiply these two terms so we have cs cubed plus ds squared Followed by 4cs plus 4d. So, medyo mahaba. Ano? Hindi nakasya sa isang line. Uh, our common denominator is the product of these two. So, we just copy s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 2s plus 2. Okay. So, since these two expressions are equal, of course, the denominators will cancel already. And therefore the numerators will be equal. Okay, that's why we need to combine all the terms that are alike and equate coefficients. Okay, so we write the remaining numerator. So we have 2s cubed plus s squared plus 8s plus 6 equals. So dito, ano yung nakakube? Uh, a plus c. So here, a plus c s cube followed by the squared term 2a plus b plus d so 2a plus b plus d and then s plus s squared rather plus the terms involving s so 2a plus 2b plus 4c 2a plus 2b plus 4c s and then the constant terms 2b plus 4d 2b plus 4d okay now from this we can have several equations first equation is a plus c equals 2 okay next equation 2a plus b plus d 2a plus b 
plus d equals the coefficient of s squared, which is 1. The next equation is 2a plus 2b. 2a plus 2b plus 4c equals the coefficient of s, which is 8. And last one, the constant terms, 2b plus 4d. 2b plus 4d equals the constant term here, which is 6. So we have 4 equations and 4 unknowns. There are calculators which can solve four equations and four unknowns. However, there are also calculators which are limited to solving three equations and three unknowns. But don't you worry, kaya yan. Ano po? Paano? Ah, Mag-eliminate lang tayo dito ng isa. Ano? So, gagamitin natin ito. Gagamitin natin ito. At itong dalawa pagsasamahin natin. I-eliminate natin ngayon yung D. Let's combine this equation and this one. So, I will solve D in this expression and substitute that here. So, if I divide this equation by 2, I will get B plus 2D equals 3. So, therefore, D equals 3 minus B divided by 2. Okay? And substitute this expression here. Okay? So, I have 2A plus b plus d okay so our d is 3 over 2 minus b over 2 so that's uh 3 halves minus b over 2 equals 1 so now we simplify 2a b minus b over 2 is 1 half of b and then 1 minus 3 halves is negative 1 half. So now we are left with 3 equations. Ito na ngayon yung gagamitin nating 3 equations para makuha yung 3 unknowns na A, B, at saka C. So now to solve for the values of A, B, and C, we can use a calculator na may 3 equations and 3 unknowns. Okay, so we have mode equation 5 and Choose option 2. Kasi yun yung uh, 3 equations and 3 unknowns. So, we have 2. Okay. So, for our first equation, ang coefficient natin ay, ang unknowns natin ay A, B, at saka C. So, 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1. And on the right-hand side, we have 2. Okay. For the second equation, this one, 2, 2, 4, 8. So, 2, 2, 4, 8. And, our last equation is this. O, oh, dapat ito may plus. Nakalimutan ko lang. 2A plus 1 half B. 2 and 0.5 one half. And, 0 yung C. And, the constant term on the right hand side is negative 0 0.5. Okay. So, now, if we plus equals... We will get the values of A, B, and C. Okay, so A is negative 1 fifth. Ulat natin dito. A is negative 1 fifth or negative 0.2. Next. B is negative 1 fifth as well. Negative 1 fifth. And the value of C is 11 over 5 or 2.2. Now, how do we get the value of D? Okay, so from this expression, we can solve for D. D is equal to 3 minus B over 2. Okay, so mode 1, 3 minus B is negative 0 0.2 over 2. And there you go, we have 8 over 5 or 1.6. So 8 over 5, which is equal to 1.6. Now, Pwede na natin isulat yung x of s as a sum of partial fractions. Okay? Gawin natin yan sa next slide. x of s equals negative 0.2 s minus 0.2 over, remember the denominator is s squared plus 4. And then plus c s plus d. So c is 2.2, d is 1.6. So we have 2.2. S plus 1.6 over S squared plus 2S plus 2. Okay, so isimplify natin yung X of S sa ilalim. No? 
x of s equals so para dito paghihiwalayin natin yung dalawang term sa taas para makuha natin yung kanyang inverse Laplace so negative 0.2 s over s squared plus 4 para ma-inverse Laplace natin ito sign yan eh kasi constant yung nasa itaas ano po so ilalabas natin yung negative 0.2 negative 0.2 dapat kasi ang nasa taas ay 2 Kasi ito ay k squared. So, ang k natin ay 2. So, 2 over s squared plus 4. However, naglagay tayo dito ng 2. Kaya dapat dito maglalagay din ako ng 2. No? Para hindi mabago. Yun ang sunod. Kapag ka, ang denominator ay hindi factorable. Yung quadratic, ang ginagawa dyan ay laging completing the square. So, magkocompleting the square tayo ha. So, kopyahin ko lang yung taas. 2.2s plus 1.6 over uh, ang complete square niyan ay s squared plus 2s plus 1. So, s squared plus 2s plus 2 is equal to s squared plus 2s plus 1 plus 1. So, this one is a perfect square which can be written as s plus 1 squared plus 1. Okay? So, this will be the denominator of this term. So, we have s plus 1 squared plus 1. Now, uh, we can readily get the inverse Laplace of the first two terms. How about the third term? For the third term, pwede ulit natin paghiwalayin yung numerator niya. Ano? Para magkaroon tayo ng sine at saka cosine. However, shifted yung s natin. No? Kaya dapat yung s sa taas meron ding s plus 1. So, ang gagawin ko dito is kokopyahin ko lang yung x of s. x of s equals negative 0.2 s over s squared plus 4 minus, ito magiging ano na siya, uh, 0.1 times 2 over s squared plus 4 plus, ilalabas ko yung 2.2. 2.2 times. Bakit? Kasi dapat yung nasa taas ay s plus 1 din. That's the rule. Kung may s plus 1 sa baba, dapat sa taas, meron ding s plus 1. So, we have s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1. This will be 2.2 times 1, which is 2.2. But the original is 1.6. So, we need to subtract something from 2.2 in order to get... 1.6. Magkano yung babawasin natin sa 2.2 para maging 1.6? So, that's 0.6. Okay. So, minus 0.6 over s plus 1 squared plus 1. Okay. Can we get the inverse Laplace transform of these terms? Yes. No? Pwede na natin kuha na yan readily ng inverse Laplace. Okay. Ano ang inverse Laplace ng term na yan? So, dito na lang natin isulat sa taas ha. X of t is equal to, ano ang inverse Laplace nito? Yan ay cosine. So, negative 0.2 times cosine of, ang k dito ay 2 kasi ang k squared ay 4. So, cosine of 2t minus 0.1 times ito. Yan ay sine. Okay? So, sine of 2t plus how about this? Uh, since may s sa taas, cosine yan. Pero since yan ay shifted, yung cosine mo ay may multiplier na exponential. Nang na exponent ay negative 1 kasi ito ay s plus 1. So, we have 2.2e to the negative t. Saan ang galing yung e to the negative t? Kasi po, yung ating cosine ay shifted. Yung s, no? Kaya makakaroon tayo ng exponential dito na ang exponent ay negative 1. Ito yun, s plus 1, kaya ito ay negative 1. And then yung cosine, no? Cosine of, okay, ang k ay 1, so t minus, ito, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 e to the negative t, ganun din. Shifted yung s, kaya dapat may exponential yung inverse Laplace niya. 0 0.6 e to the negative t times sine of, Okay, ano ang k natin? 1. Sine of t. So, there you go guys. Ito na yung ating inverse Laplace transform. At again, anong nire-represent ng inverse Laplace transform? Yun yung solution ng differential equation. no? And yung solution ng differential equation, yun ang response ng system. Okay, tingnan nga natin kung tama tayo. Tingnan natin ang sagot. 
Ito siya. Ay, ayun no. <laughs> Tama. So, negative 0.2 cosine 2t minus 0.1 sin 2t plus 2.2. Ito yun. E to the negative t cosine t minus 0.6 e to the negative t sin t. Okay? So, kanina sabi natin, uh, since ang input ay sinusoidal, makakapag-expect tayo ng output na sinusoidal din. Alin yun? Ito yun, no? Ito ang ating sinusoidal output. Yan ang steady state response natin. And, uh, syempre, yung ating response, may kasamang transient. Ito naman yung transient part. Okay? So, this is the complete response which can be broken down as a sum of the steady state response which is sinusoidal which is due to a sinusoidal input and a decaying uh, exponential here na may multiplier na sine wave. So, actually, ito ay sinusoidal na nagdedecay. So, yung parang ganito siya. Yan, nagdedecay na sinusoidal. So, ang matitira na lang is itong sinusoidal na ito na may constant amplitude. Okay? So, ganun po yung response ng system. No? So, again, sa example na ito, na ipakita natin kung paano mag-solve ng differential equation gamit ang Laplace transform. And again, yung solution ng differential equation ang nagre-represent dun sa response ng system. And again, ang complete response ay may dalawang portion, yung steady state response at saka yung transient response. So now let us solve the last and final example for this episode. Solve the initial value problem. So here we have the third derivative minus the first derivative equals 4t plus 2e to the minus t. So if we will interpret this as a system, then the system has uh, the input 4t and 2e to the negative t. So, dalawa yung input natin. Yung isa power function, yung isa naman ay exponential. So, to solve the DE again, we will use the Laplace transform method. What is the Laplace transform of the third derivative? That's S cube Y of S. And then minus S squared Y of 0. Minus S Y dot of 0. And then minus Y of 0. Next minus the Laplace transform of the first derivative. Okay, so here we have s, y of s, minus y of 0. Okay, equals, so the Laplace transform of 40 is 4 over s squared, plus the Laplace transform of 2 e to the minus t is 2 over s plus 1. Now we combine all terms containing y of s y of s times s cube ano pa minus s and then impose the initial condition so since y of 0 is equal to negative 1 negative of negative is positive so this will be s squared next y dot of 0 equals 1 so minus s y of 0 is i'm sorry this should be y dot of 0 so, since y dot of 0 equals 0, 0 na siya, no? Tapos, ito naman, uh, negative, negative, magiging positive. y of 0, negative 1 pa rin siya. Equals 4 over s squared plus 2 over s plus 1. So, we simplify the right-hand side by using a common denominator, s squared times s plus 1. Okay? Anong numerator niyan? 2s squared plus 4s plus 4. Ayun. 2s squared plus 4s plus 4. Ang sunod is ilipat itong tatlong ito sa kabila. Okay? So, ang matitira lang dito, y of s times s cube minus s equals unahin ko muna itong isulat. So, 2s squared plus 4s plus 4 over s squared times s plus 1. Tapos, uh, unahin ko muna ito ha, kasi positive siya. No? So, plus s minus s squared plus 1. Ayan. Para madali mamaya. No? <laughs> kasi kukunan natin yun ang common denominator. Ano ang common denominator niyan? Mahaba. No? So, s squared times s 
plus 1. So, multiply natin to Multiply natin yun. Yun ang numerator. ba diba? <laughs> Okay. So, this one, kasi ang denominator nilang lahat ay 1, ba diba? So, multiply natin to Kukopyahin ko lang to 2s squared plus 4s plus 4. Tapos, multiply natin yun. No? So, magiging s cubed plus s cubed plus s squared times s minus s squared plus 1. Okay. So, after that, makukuha na natin ngayon yung y of s. No? So, itong multiplier ng y of s, magiging denominator lang dito. Equals. Pero, uh, simplify muna natin yung kanyang numerator. Ano? Simplify ko muna yung numerator na ito, dini sa taas. Okay? So, 2s squared plus 4s plus 4 plus s to the 4th minus s to the 5th plus s cubed plus s squared times all the three terms. So, s cubed minus s to the 4th plus s squared. Pag isinimplify natin yan, may magkakancel ba? Itong s to the 4th, tapos itong 2s cubed, pwede na nating pagsamahin. Uh, isulat natin yan in order of decreasing exponents. Negative of s to the 5 followed by s cubed. So, 2s cubed followed by yung may s squared. 2s squared plus s squared is 3s squared. Tapos yung may s, alin ang may s, plus 4s, tapos itong 4 na to, plus 4. Now, ano naman ang denominator? So, ang denominator, ito yung original, mamumultiply siya na ito. However, ito kasi factorable, di ba? Factorable siya. Anong factors niyan? Common factor ang s. So, yung s magiging multiplier nito. So, magiging s cube siya, di ba? <laughs> Tapos, kopyahin mo yung s plus 1, at kopyahin mo yung natira dito na ano, s squared, no? magiging ano na siya, s squared minus 1. O, diba? But this s squared minus 1 is difference of 2 squares, which can be written as s plus 1 times s minus 1. Okay? So, ano mangyayari? So, itong s plus 1 na ito, magiging repeated. No? Magiging dalawa siya. Kaya, lalagyan natin dito ng square. Tapos, S minus 1. Okay, so ito na po yung ating factored denominator. Ang kasunod niyan, i-represent na natin yan as a sum of partial fractions. Unang term para sa S cube. So repeated siya, 3 times na ulit. So, pag yan ay ating partial fraction, yan ay A over S plus B over S squared plus C over S cube. Tapos, unahin natin yung S minus 1 ha d over s minus 1 plus repeated yung s plus 1. So, linear. Constant pa rin yung numerator niya. e over s plus 1. At dahil naulit siya, constant din naman yung numerator niya. Repeated lang naman yun. So, s plus 1 squared. Okay. So, now, we need to determine the values of a, b, c up to f. So, this may seem difficult, ano? Kung gagamit ka dito ng equating coefficients, medyo mahirap siya. Kaya, ang gagamitin natin is yung shortcut na ginamit natin nung first example, okay? So, gagamit tayo ng calculator dito, no? Uh, since may mga repeated denominators tayo, repeated factors, gagamit tayo ng derivative. So, kapag uh, dito, tinanggal natin yung s, and we let s be equal to 0, ang makukuha natin ay value ng c. So, para makuha mo yung B, uulitin mo lang yun. When S is equal to 0, pero magdi-differentiate ka muna. Okay? So, unahin natin kuhanin yung value ng B. Paano? Sa calculator, ang gawin mo lang is, kuha ka lang ng derivative. Okay? Shift D over DX of what? etong buong to. Hindi kasama ang S cube. So, tatanggalin muna natin siya, ha? Okay. Kasi hindi pwedeng mag... Pre, maging present itong s cube kasi nga po nasa denominator siya. Pag ang denominator ay nag zero, magiging undefined kaya tinatanggal natin, no? Yan yung residue method na tinatawag. So kopyahin ko lang ha, lahat ng s gawin kong x. x to the fifth uh, plus 2 s cube. So 2 x shift cube plus 3 x squared 
plus 4x plus 4 divided by, yung denominator, ang matitira lang muna ay x plus 1 squared times x minus 1. Tapos, kuna natin siya ng derivative kapag ang x ay 0. So, makukuha natin doon value ng b ha? Okay, so equals. So, ang sagot ay 0. So, that means b is 0. Lagay ko muna dito ang b ay 0. Next, ang sunod, kapag ka tinanggal ko yung derivative, yan, delete, at uh, kinalit ko yan na ang x ay 0 pa rin, ang makukuha ko na ay value ng c. Okay, so negative 4. So, the value of c is negative 4. Unahin muna natin yung d. Para makuha ko yung d, I will let s be equal to 1 and remove this from the expression. So, ibabalik ko ngayon yung s cube at ang tatanggalin ko naman ay s minus 1. So, balik ako sa calculator ano para mabilis. Sa baba, maglagay ako ng x cube. Tapos, tatanggalin ko muna yung x minus 1. At i-compute ko ang value nyan kapag ang x ay 1. No? Ano ang magpapasaydo sa denominator ng d? So, 1 equals, ayan. So, the value of d is 3. Diba? Ang dali lang. <laughs> Next, compute natin ang value nung e at saka f. So, since repeated yan, anong madaling gawin? Unahin muna natin yung ano ba ang magpapasiro sa denominator nung f kapag ang s ay negative 1. So, negative 1. So, ayun. Ang sagot ay 1. So, f equals 1. No? So, the value of f equals 1. So, ang nakuha natin ay value nung f. So, para makuha natin yung e, magdi-differentiate tayo. Yung ginawa natin kanina, i-differentiate lang natin. No? So, para hindi na tayo mag-type ulit, mag-insert na lang tayo. Shift, insert. Ayun. Tapos, shift yung derivative. Ayan, nasa loob na siya ng derivative, di ba? Para hindi ka na mag-type ng maraming beses. <laughs> para hindi mo na pawiin at i-rewrite or i-retype yung iyong expression. So, again, the value of x is still negative 1 equals. So, the value of e is 3. Ayan. The value of e equals 3. So, ngayon, ang natitira na lang ay a. No? Yun na lang yung unknown. So, dahil siya na lang yung unknown, pwede na tayong mag-shift solve dito. No? Paano mag-shift solve? Maglele tayo ng value ng s sa left-hand side at maglele tayo ng value ng s sa right-hand side. At ilalagay na natin yung values ng b, c, d, e, at saka f para ang matira na lang ay yung unknown na a. So, ano ang pinakamadali? Hindi na natin pwedeng gamitin yung 0. Okay? Bakit? Kasi nagamit na natin kanina. Hindi rin natin pwedeng gamitin yung 1. No? At hindi rin natin pwedeng gamitin ang negative 1. So, ang pinakamadali, uh, 2 na lang. No? So, ano to? Magiging negative of 2 cube, which is, ano ba ang 2? 2 to the 5th, 32. Ayan, 32 plus 2 times s cube. 2 cube is... 8 times 2 is 16, tapos plus 3s squared. So, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 2 8, plus 4 is 12. Ayan. Divided by, so 2 cube is 8, times 2 plus 1, 3 squared is 9, 2 minus 1 is 1. So, 1 na lang siya. Ayan, equals... So, dito ang matitira ay yung A na hinahanap natin over ang S ay 2 plus, ano nga ang B? 0. So, 0 na yun. No? Yung C, negative 4. So, negative 4 over 2 cube is 8. And then, plus D. Ano yung D? Negative, I'm sorry, D is equal to 3 over 2 minus 1 is 1 plus E is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3 plus F which is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3 squared is 9. Okay? So, para madali, mag-calculator na lang tayo. Ano? I-shift solve na natin yan sa calculator. Pero, of course, uh, simplify natin kung kaya. No? Diba? So, negative 32 plus 16 is negative 16. Tapos, plus 12 plus 12 is 24. Para mabilis. Diba? 8 times 9 is 72. <laughs> Then equals, okay, alpha x, yung hinahanap natin na a over 2. 
Tapos, aha, 4 over 8 is 1 half. So, minus na yun, di ba? Minus 0 0.5. Okay, plus 3. And then, plus 1. And then, plus 1 over 9. Ayun, shift, solve. Maglagay ka ng trial value. Halimbawa, 2. Halimbawa lang, equals. So, ayan, ang sagot ay negative 7. So, thus, the value of A equals negative 7. Ayan. So, ngayon, pwede na nating express itong Y of S as a sum of partial fractions na may values yung numerator niya. ba? Kopyahin lang natin yung Y of S dito sa slide na to. Y of S is A over S. Or in A is negative 7. So, negative 7 over S. Ang B ay 0. And then, yung CI, si negative 4. So, minus 4 over S cube plus D is 3. So, 3 over S minus 1. And then, E is also 3. So, plus 3 over S plus 1. And then, F is 1. 1 over S plus 1 squared. Ayan. Ang sunod na step ay mag-perform na ng inverse Laplace. Last na yan, no? Kapag kinuha na mo ng inverse Laplace, yung y of s, ang makukuha mo na ay y of t. At yung y of t, yun na ang solution. O, ba? Ang dali lang. Okay. Sabay-sabay natin gawin yan. Ano ang y of t? Inverse Laplace ng negative 7 over s. So, that's negative 7. Ano ang inverse Laplace? ng 4 over s cube. Actually, kung yan ay s cube, dapat t squared yan. Now, pero kung t squared, ano ba ang Laplace ng t squared? So, that's 2 over s cube. Diba? Pero yun ay 4. So, ang gawin natin is, ilabas natin dito yung negative 2. So, negative 2, and then may matitirang 2 over s cube na ang Laplace transform ay t squared. So, minus 2 t squared. And then, plus, anong inverse nito? So, that's e raised to t plus inverse ng 3 over s plus 1 that's 3 e to the negative t plus okay since repeated yan yan ay e to the minus t lang na may multiplier na t ba so anong inverse la plus nito so yan ay t e to the negative t so there you go eto na po yung solution nung differential equation na given and again anong nare-represent nung solution yan ang response nung system so, kung ating mapapansin, meron tayo ditong dalawang exponentials na nagre-represent dun sa transient response at itong natitirang tatlo ang nagre-represent naman sa steady state response. So, ayan, nabigyan ko na kayo ng tatlong examples kung paano gamitin yung Laplace transform method sa pagkuha ng solution ng differential equation. Now, as a bonus, Tuturuan ko kayo kung paano gumamit ng MATLAB para makuha ang inverse Laplace. Okay? Gusto nyo ba yon? Sige, gawin natin. <laughs> Kuha tayo ng MATLAB. No? So ngayon, gagamit tayo ng MATLAB para kunin yung inverse Laplace nung problem na sinosolve natin kanina. So ito yun, ano? Ito yung kukunan natin ng inverse Laplace. Okay? So paano natin gagawin sa MATLAB? Type mo lang yung SIMS. S, tapos enter tapos gawa ka lang ng expression nung kukunan mo ng inverse Laplace diba? so kanina y of s yon kaya ang gagamitin ko na variable ay y y is equal to lagay ko sa parenthesis yung negative s raised to 5 plus 2s cube so plus 2 yung multiplication sign is asterisk no, don't forget that otherwise magkakamali ka 2s cube plus 3s squared, 3s squared, plus 4s plus 4. So, yan yung numerator. Divide natin siya ng parenthesis. Anong unang factor? s cube. Parenthesis. Tapos, multiplication sign. Second factor, s minus 1. Diba? s minus 1 times the third factor s plus 1 na naka-squared. Tapos, parenthesis ulit. Tapos, semicolon. After that, kunan na natin yan ng inverse Laplace. So, kapag ka in inverse Laplace mo yung capital letter, why di ba small letter, why yun? No? <laughs> Equals, 
Ang command is I Laplace. No? I Laplace of capital letter Y. Yun yung kinukunan natin ng inverse Laplace. And then, pwede mo na siyang i-enter. So, ito na yung sagot. No? 3e to the negative t plus 3e to the t plus t e to the negative t minus 2t squared minus 7. So, if you will compare, ito yung nakuha nating sagot. Ah, diba? Ayan, o, negative 7, negative 2t squared, 3e to the t, 3e to the negative t, at saka t e to the negative t. O, yun yung nakuha natin. O, diba? So, ayan, no? <laughs> Na-prove natin na gumagana yung MATLAB. <laughs> Kasi yung sagot na nakuha natin sa MATLAB ay kagaya nung nakuha natin sa manumanong solution. Okay? Now, there are times when you will get an expression containing fractions. So, kapag ka ganun, gawa ka lang ng pretty. No? I-pretty mo lang. No? Pretty yung y para mapaganda siya, yung itsura niya. No? So, ayan. So, dito ang nagkaiba lang is uh, wala siyang fraction eh kasi lahat ng coefficients niya ay whole numbers. Pero, nakita natin na negative 2t squared. Ito o, oh, ayan. Para mas maganda siyang tingnan. So, yung i natin ay yun ay exp. 3e to the negative t plus 3e to t plus t e to the negative t minus 2t squared minus 7. So, again, para mas magandang tingnan yung sagot natin kung siya ay nagtataglay ng mga rational expressions or fraction coefficients, gamitin mo lang yung command na pretty. Okay? So, ayan. Natuto na kayo kung paano mag-solve ng linear differential equations gamit yung Laplace transform. And at the same time, natutunan nyo rin kung paano gamitin ang MATLAB para makuha ang inverse Laplace transform. Eh, di ba? Yung inverse Laplace, yun na rin yung solution ng differential equation. Okay? Bago tayo matapos, bibigyan ko ng problem na pwede nyo pagpraktisan. Okay? Ayan na pala yung sagot, no? <laughs> So, ito yung exercise problem. No? Find the solution of the initial value problem. So, here, we have a third order DE. Meron tayong tatlong initial conditions. So, pwede mong isolve yung solution yan mano-mano. Tapos, yung makukuha mong solution, pwede mong i-check gamit ang MATLAB. So, i-post mo muna yan at isolve mo. After that, ito na yung sagot. Ready ka na ba? <laughs> Ready ka na bang makita ang sagot? Yan. So, this is the solution for the differential equation. Kung nakuha mo yan, eh di wow. <laughs> because this is quite a challenging problem already. So, if you're able to get the solution using manual method, and you're able to verify the solution using MATLAB, and get the correct answer, then, ready ka na sa quiz. Okay? So, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new today. Bye-bye!